All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PSR podcast, where we'll be covering everything from the last month in Pokemon speedrunning. Uh, my name is Iron. I'm one of the hosts for today's episode, which is episode three of season three. With me, I have my awesome co-hosts, uh, Jordan97. Hello. Etiquette. Hello. And Tucker. Hi, everyone. And we have a very familiar face joining us as our guest this week, Skoa Gogo. Hi, Skoa. Hello. So Skoa is joining us because uh, we had a lot of activity going on in the Pokemon or in the, in the DS side of Pokemon speedrunning this past month with quite a few records, including one from Skoa himself. So I'll let you take it away. Alrighty. Yeah, so this is the, the new record for Black and White 1, um, which is something that hasn't really been talked about probably for like almost two years now because the top end of this game has been rather inactive for a really long time um it, it's pretty much it, it's a pretty standard black and white one run other than like I, the, the, in terms of the mid game at least the, my splits are a little bit like it, it, they don't quite look as good as they actually are so this run was the best pace ever from Berg, I think the whole way through until the Elite Four split. Um, well, I, I think I might uh, no, it was probably actually the best pace like the whole way through. But like getting best pace ever in pretty much any category um, in modern day PSR is really really difficult um, because there's always like one person who's had an absolutely ridiculous early game. Um, but yeah, this this run is quite silly uh it has community best berg almost community best elisa um no one's quite managed to get a 115 elisa sadly um but this run is it's just overall really strong pretty much nothing really goes wrong for the first like two and a half hours um it does start to fall apart towards the end uh, some of it's because of my mistakes i made a really really silly mistake in the desert resort that made me have to open a menu again it cost me like 10 seconds um and obviously the fight that you just saw as iron was going through the intro there was the elisa fight which is one of the um the big variant splits in any gen 5 game really because of static um obviously 30 percent of trigger on contact um, it's it's particularly bad or bad in black and white one against Elisa um, purely just because she spams Volt Switch. So any extra turns that you have to spend against the Amalgas loses more than really it should because extra switches and all that jazz. Um, but I was quite lucky to get away with. Um, I, I did get one static on the split, but against Elisa herself, it was it was all good. Um, but this run was low 310 pace until the final two fights um i'm gonna get jordan to flick forward to the final end fight which is about three hours five minutes or so um yeah so this fight <laughs> really oh. you only hear people talking about like this fight going horrendously wrong in like recent years so I, I i've been running black and white one since 2017 and literally until we started using lilypop i didn't even know zekrom knew light screen because i had just never seen it use it at any point um and light screen is a massive massive time loss um obviously because it means n heals up zekrom and it messes up a lot of stuff for the fight um I actually misplayed there by continuing to hammer Dragon Breaths into it. What you really should do is swap into Stoutland and kill Zekrom with Stoutland and then go against Caracosta or whatever he brings. I don't actually think he brings out Caracosta next, but you, you just continue the fight um, with Stoutland. Um, so I also made another mistake here by using another workup. I should have used a Super Potion to get myself into um, good HP to kill Caracosta with Reversal. Um, but I didn't know about that until after the fight. So, yeah, a lot of this was some inexperience, even though I've been running the game for years and years. I have very, very little experience using the Lilypop route. Um, I think this is only, like, 
This is my third ever PB with Lily Pup, and I think it's only like my fourth or fifth finish run ever with Lily Pup. So, I, it, it's good in terms of progress, but it, it does mean I make a lot of quite silly mistakes because of that kind of stuff. And again, Kling Clang taking two hits there. If I had miss or if I hadn't misplayed against Caracosta, it would have died in one. Um, but yeah, the. It could have been so much more than what it was, and it would have been nice to get the 310. Um, but I, I always did say whenever I was grinding this, I didn't want to get a really, really good run with it because I have more ideas for the game that are going to take a really long time to work on. So I didn't want to get like a really, really solid time without implementing everything. So I did just enough to get record without blowing the game out of the water, really. Um, because that, that, that time is still very, very beatable. Um, and I do anticipate that someone probably will beat it at some stage. Um, probably in the near future if anyone decides to give Black and White 1 like a, a real push at the top end. It'd be nice to see, because the game has been quite quiet since Minnow and Cram stopped playing, really. So, yeah. Could have been better, but I'm happy to get it. That's not like typical. You get world record. Oh, there's so many improvements type thing. Oh uh, yeah, the, the, there's there's a really um, <laughs> the, there's a funny emote that's called like mistakes in my PB. It's used. I don't know if it's used much in PSR. It's used quite a lot in the Mario 64 community. Um, it's like, it's like of a Spongebob character, like, letting over a piece of paper and it's just, like, it just rolls and there's, like, lines and lines of stuff. That's basically how I feel about this run. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes in it, but, like, uh, with, with how little I, I've played the route, I'm happy that I've gotten what I did. It's just, with, with, with how sky high I hold my standards against, like, my own runs, um, I, I always like to... Be, you know anything other than me playing perfectly i really don't like so <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to attain that but it's 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 happy enough i'm happy enough with it yeah and like said as well like you know that there's more things that you want to work on yeah but that though those ideas are are years down the line like for for as long as i have record in this game i don't think I'm going to use the ideas, primarily because I don't have resources that allow me to do it because RNG Reporter is so, so slow. Um, like I, I'm doing searches in that program that genuinely take like 12 hours to complete and I just don't have the time that I can dedicate to doing the searches because RNG Reporter steals like your entire CPU usage so like you you can't really do much with your computer whenever it's running um and I I just I'm also not at home often enough to have my actual good computer to to run stuff like that so and even with good good specs in your computer it's probably still at least slow I imagine yeah I I have an 8 core CPU in my computer and it takes 12 hours so damn <laughs> It's it's not really ideal, but to counter that, one of my friends um, that I go to uni with is actually rewriting um, RNG Reporter in a different language to see if that can speed it up any. And if that even takes like two hours off of it, I will probably return to looking at everything again because I can, it's just so much more feasible to sit and do it but what's the current rng reporter written in c sharp okay and um slayer famously wrote um an rng chaining tool for gen 4 in python and it is faster than using rng reporter for any of that stuff so but he never wrote one for gen 5 despite me asking quite a lot he just never did <laughs> 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 yeah, con contrasting what Sizzle has said. <laughs> well, with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the weird way that um, 
RNG reporter is coded. I just, I, it just does not allow like multi-threading at all. I don't think. So it just, it just tanks your performance and it just runs so slow. Yeah, it, it's the the code is an absolute mess. If you if you go to um, GitHub, you can you can download the master file for it. It's, it's a mess. It's written quite weirdly. Um, but yes, the, the the letters next to the splits. That's how good that uh, split was in my PB, and also alongside that, roughly how easy it should be to save time. So that final split there, for example, C grade, that's the lowest I've ever given something. The fact that I lost time is like really, really bad. That means that split was absolutely horrible. Um, and obviously like, losing time to an A plus is not that bad because the split was really good. So yeah, that, that that's all I've got to say about black and white one. No, for every time because it's going to take forever to there. But for the day <laughs> in the end. The internet's not even that bad. I don't know what's over the computer. This, this your, computer your computer's not having any of it today. No, it's not. It, it, heard, <laughs> it said, it heard me say that I was actually like on time with things. And it's like, now we're going to make everything else a nightmare for you. Time to cause as many issues as possible. Yeah, exactly. Um, so on your screen now is the new Diamond Pearl Any% percent JPN world record by Purple Saki. Um, and what we've highlighted is the extended manip movement that is done for not actually the first time ever in this category. Um, the, the the progression of this car category is actually quite funny to me because every I think for the past like six iterations of the record, every single runner has done something different. Um, so if you go back like two years or something, um buster just did like the english manip um obviously with the way gen 4 rng works after battles rng keeps running and all the manip windows are made so that um it's in line with the english tech speed and japanese or the japanese copies are way 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 faster so you just kind of have to sit there for a bit and wait um so buster did that years ago and then panyuda came to the game and did English Manip up to Fashion Case and then made a Japanese exclusive uh, Fashion Case Manip and did that. And then I came to the game and did what Buster did and got record. And then I changed it to make a Japanese exclusive Manip that skips the Sanjem Mart and takes only one Mart in Orberg and got record with that. And then Dexy went back in time and just did i think what buster did from years prior and then i got it back with what i was doing and now purple saki has made a brand new manip for fashion case because it's not the same stuff that uh Panyuda did years and years ago um so it, it's nice to see the return of uh extended manip to this category um outside of the fact that it uses extended minip, it's it's overall it's a it's a pretty average um, run in terms of there's not anything absolutely insanely good in it, but there's like there in Diamond Pearl it's more about not having things go atrociously as opposed to how much goes right. Like if you get a if you get a clean run where nothing goes astronomically wrong, you like you'll get a good time. Um, but it's it's very cool to see, especially in this category, because this category doesn't really get a lot of competition in the first place. And it gets even less um, in uh, the Japanese categories, because um, in Japan, they just they just don't seem to run glitched Pokemon at all. I don't know why they just they just seem to avoid it. Um, so it's nice to see, um, from my understanding, a new face um, pick this up. I don't know if anyone's heard of Purple Saki before. I hadn't prior to this run. So I don't know if I'm the only one or if... The name sounds familiar from like past runs, but I... I you, you hear a lot of names. <laughs> That's like, true, you do you hear a lot of names. Movies. Well, I'm going to go to their SRC profile. Yeah, that's what I'm doing as well. <laughs> oh, wow, a mystery dungeon runner. That might be why then. Yeah, that, that might be why. 
So n new to the DS scene. Actually, no, they they've got second place in Diamond Pearl Glitchless Japanese. So yeah, we are talking yeah, absolute garbage, apparently. <laughs> so yeah, it's strictly Diamond Pearl for main series, though. But yeah, it has been around for at least two years. Interesting. Interesting. It'd be interesting oh, yeah. to see if they they branch out into into other games now that they've. They've got that. It'd be interesting to see Dexy get some competition. <laughs> well, the question is, will you return to JPN? DP any percent? Yes, I will, because I intend to make a manip that skips all marts the same way we do in English. Nice. Um, and I'll get a run with that, and it'll hopefully be a 56. Because um, my, my PB that uh, this run beat was like um 57 ox pace into tweaking and i choked the Drupal life tweak um 10 times uh, i got an 11th try tweak in my run <laughs> so uh it's been on my mind as something to fix for a really a really really long time that was so, like uh, japanese pill maybe the new hot category because i know someone else is uh going to be doing it as well like, oh, at least it's looking into it, I think, because I think I've seen Etchy talking about it. Oh, Ed Etchy posted a photo on Twitter, right? Yeah, something like that. Uh, like, I've seen him talk about it in his, in his Discord as well, so... Yeah, it'd be interesting to have to have more people playing it, because it, it is a really fun category. Like, I, I know it's, um... It's absolutely biased just because of how much time I've put into this category. Because a lot of people really, really don't like Diamond Pearl any percent, but I, I think it's one of the most fun games to grind. Because it's so short, you can put so much time into it. There is nothing wrong with being biased about categories. Yeah, so, that, that that's fair. I'm yeah. very biased with a lot of the stuff I run, despite the fact a lot of other people don't like them. Like, I, I defend Platinum Glitchless with Piplop until the bitter end, and basically no one else does, <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah. You've, you've, you've always got to be a cheerleader for, for what you enjoy. Yeah, that's true. If I if I don't cheer for Piplop, basically no one else will. And <laughs> the same is true of this category, only I, I think I literally am the only one who will cheer <laughs> for this category. <laughs> But yeah, uh, that, that's all I've got in the uh, did, did you mention about them just stopping running for a second during the minute? Has that actually happened yet? Because I wasn't paying attention. Oh, yeah, that that was like right at the start of um, the clip that you started showing. So oh. normally with how Gen 4 RNG works, you don't really want to stop your movement at any point. A lot of the minute paths are done. In fact, no, in fact, every minute path is done for continuous movement. Um, and if you stop basically anywhere where there's RNG advancing, your minute just nine times out of ten will just die then and there. Because the RNG will advance past what it's supposed to be. Um, this is the I, the first time I have seen that um, a minute path has been routed so that you stop moving especially with where it is which is in jubilife city which is one of the fastest advancing or one of the fastest locations that you can advance rng in the entire game um so it's a it's a, it's a strange choice although i've actually just had a revelation as to why they might have done it um because the, the alternative is you could probably just take an extra step and do it that way but they've probably not done that so that they can use the step count rollover the 128 step counter to roll over an encounter in a, in eterna forest because that is the only way you can get through eterna forest without repels on this seed um. so i'm assuming that's maybe why it's been done but i i could be wrong i could just you know i i could just be like so far off but if I, if I had to guess if there was an actual reason behind it, um, that's what I would hazard it probably is. 
because otherwise you just wait like a tiny bit longer on like a text box or something so i don't know maybe it's just Wait. preference and i'm trying to look for something that's not there i don't know well i mean if what you said is correct that's pretty big brilliant Hopefully yeah it, 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 it's a good so, way to approach it yeah because it's actually the thing that stopped me from finishing a minute for this game like two years ago because that that thing i said about skipping all marts i actually had a path for that for like a really long time and i was walled by a turn of forest and i was too lazy to figure like like to redo all the work so that that didn't happen so yeah re respect for for doing it because it's it's a pain to do respect indeed that took it all right Soul so there has been a lot of activity in HGSS uh, glitchless during the month of February. Um, here we have Worcester's uh, 331.44. Um, so we've highlighted this Whitney fight. Um, this is basically like a culmination of all of the work that Worcester's been doing behind the scenes to give himself a competitive advantage in this category. Um, what he's done here is he's found out a like a bunch of battle RNG frames that produce like, you know, all these metronomes. Um, I think he got like synthesis in this fight. I, I kind of just Yeah, he, it, he did. It was synthesis. Yeah, so once he sees that synthesis, he has like the whole fight routed out now. So he knows exactly what to do against Mill Tank. Like he's he's manipulating this whole fight so that, you know, he's getting past these attracts. Um, I think he's eventually going to crit this. Yeah, and that, 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 that was Mill Tank. Cool. Yeah, so this is like the best possible fight that he can get after he's identified that fight, which is like a huge help. Um, it kind of requires him to like get these like really specific identifiers because if otherwise, if you see like a common like, oh, you got a double slap for like two, like you're not going to be able to tell what fight you got there. But um, the fact that he's like gone in into like the Whitney fight and also the Faulkner fight to like identify like specific like rare occurrences and then take what he can get out of those fights like maximizing his chances and time saves out of those situations shows like how much dedication and work he has towards getting uh you know the best time possible in hgss um but yeah to talk about the rest of his run um he did end up getting a 331 in this um he well, before this PB that he got, he was beaten by Dexy. Um, Dexy got the first 331, and he had used a flamethrower route. Um, I don't think we have Dexy's run highlighted, but yeah, that's the main the main takeaway from Dexy's uh, PB prior to this. And Worcester, Worcester um, has like more tools to his advantage. Like Dexy doesn't have like the same. Um, strats like you know Worcester has like cans bend up over Dexy he has um all these identifiers now um he's also like a much more risky player like in general like just like look at the way that he passes spinners um <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um generally uh he yeah you know I, I already talked about this a lot but um yeah I think we can go to the red fight now because this red fight was quite interesting um so he was put in a weird situation where his hp um let him go for a risk that um is really convoluted but essentially it makes it so that he's going to get hit into a range where pikachu is guaranteed to quick attack but he's not guaranteed to live the quick attack so what he can do after this full tackle is he can set up another X special, which is not normal. And um, I believe at this point he is like uh, seven and sixteen to die this quick attack, but he lives it. So he gets a nice heal turn here. He's going to get quick attack again, take less damage than he would from um, using like using a just a full restore there, and you know. He's not a turn ahead. He has the second X special. 
which you'd normally do on Snorlax. But then the the weird part is he he's, he gets um, quick attacked again, and he gets crit. Um, so this makes it so that this crunch is again a risk, very similar to what we just had with uh, that first quick attack there. He's 7 and 16 to die again to Snorlax's crunch. So he's like, at this point, he's debating like whether what I sh what should I do. He goes for the risk, um, being so close to the world record right here, and he lives. He actually gets a min roll here. Um, so yeah, now he's he's quite far ahead of you know the regular red strat where you're like X defend on Snorlax. Um, so yeah, from here he gets a decent fight. Um, I believe on Blastoise he doesn't dodge anything, which would have really helped him. But um, at the end of it all, he squeaks out a, a small record, really benefiting from the risky strats that he took on Pikachu and Snorlax. And um, that caps off this run. I believe this wasn't this wasn't like a perfect run by by any means. Um, he lost a lot of time on Misty, and he also missed a Brock range as well. And... Um, did he get Kansman up on this? I don't think he did. He... So, he, like, messed up the movement after flying to Vermilion. Oh, no. But after... <laughs> yeah, he, he seems to do this, like, quite a bit. <laughs> he wants, like... He wants to run that actually, you know... He, he knows which which can that the first one is in. But like after finding the first can, he like kind of knew at that point what the second can would be based on like what frame he was close to when he was yeah. entering Vermilion. But yeah, um, so it was first try cans. Um, at this point, like in HGSS, if you're not getting first try cans, like you kind of just lose too much time to like be a serious contender like that. HSS had gotten really optimized. Um, we're trying to catch up to Worcester by like figuring out cans so that eventually more runners can do cans and hopefully not have to deal with any failed cans minute, uh, failed cans. Um, but yeah, she gets frenzy plant there, which is like takes a while, but yeah. Venusaur goes down, that's the fight. Um, Sorry, just to, clar I guess to at this clarify, point, Tucker, with the, yeah. with, the, um, with the fights where he was kind of seeing the, the sort of identifiers. Mm -hmm. And um, he's he's obviously still on Manip at that point, like in general. Um, Not for Whitney. Or does that have anything? Or does, that, does that have anything? That doesn't have to do with the Manip then, okay. Yeah, the primary... Uh, Sorry, not the primary energy, that's like Gen 5. The, the RNG... In the overworld is different from the battle RNG because battle RNG is like it, it only depends on how long it it's been since you booted the game you know so like lag affects that as well lag frames um so yeah it's like hard harder way harder to control battle RNG I mean obviously like that's why we still have luck in Pokemon <laughs> but yeah Oh, but even though even though it's even though the battle's not affected by what he's been do doing in the overworld, you can still sort of know what to do. Yeah, exactly. If he's gone crazy. in there and done the dirty work to figure out, like, it, say, if he gets like crit by Faulkner's Pidgey for like twelve damage, then he'll know what to do from that point. Like, I think like one of the fights, like he uses. I remember seeing um, of that. Yeah. Yeah, he uses tackle, and then like eventually it leads to. RNG advancing differently so that he gets like an ember crit on Pidgeotto and he just wins that fight quickly. And stuff like that makes makes worse to have like this huge competitive advantage over over anyone else and uh, deserves it like he, he's done all this work. Yeah, so to, to, to clarify, this, this is done by him sitting for R's and R's and R's in an emulator. <laughs> manually testing each individual fight to figure out a way through it to be as fast as possible like it's it is an absolutely insane undertaking to do it yeah he's sunk so much time into this game over the years it's crazy 
and the, the the big thing really for Whitney Whitney especially Faulkner to a lesser extent is a lot of this is really for it's not even necessarily that you're gonna get faster fights more a lot of the identifiers like they are done so they are slightly quicker but the big thing is that you're winning <laughs> especially against Whitney yeah. where your fights can go absolutely catastrophically wrong um so having things like that in your back pocket that you can look to if you need them um it's it's really really useful because Whitney is probably the hardest fight in this run other than red in terms of just like your sheer odds of winning um and Whitney is one of the fights that even if you do win, it's very possible that you straight up just lose like one minute just because of a tract or whatever. So. Yeah, like ECS has a brutal speed game. Like there's a lot of fights in the early game that like just end your run. Like Whitney can just end your run based on pace. So like just having these chances to win, like a lower, lower chance to lose. In general is just super huge and it has seemed to like pay off because worcester gets on runs like seemingly every day i get past whitney to raikou um yeah, also and, and more runs to raikou is just invaluable in this game <laughs> yeah also i just remembered that um his raikou location minute is also different now um jordan if you can go to that 58 minute point in the run I'm not talking out of my on my butt. Yeah, it's a little more to like when he's moving. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, as you can see here, he's biking all the way through in critique and then he does his like stopping movement here. Um, this this requires you to play on a different day. Uh, you still get the same seed, but. Um, RNG works a little differently on this route because of Sunny, the NPC that gives you the magnet. Um, you don't actually get the magnet, but that NPC like advances it differently so that you're able to do this faster location minute. It's a bit riskier because it involves, you know, getting on the bike and then doing that weird stopping movement. Um, I, so I guess this is another instance of you stopping completely during RNG minute. But yeah, uh, I believe it saves like around six to eight seconds I, I can't remember which one but it's a considerable I thought it was five it's something like that so somewhere in that ballpark yeah i think you don't have to do turn frames either in the basement of burn tower yeah you, you don't you just run out yeah so yeah um that's pretty much it for worcester's run uh he did say that he's going on a break um he's currently in that break um it's going to be a month long so like a couple more weeks until um he comes back and he said that he wants to get a quote-unquote killer run of hcss so maybe like <laughs> maybe like a 330 um definitely looks possible now especially for do you think some 330 is possible with uh with this category uh it'll require like you know a, a godly run <laughs> yeah I wouldn't say it's impossible though. Like actually, it falls into the conversation of oh, it it's technically possible. Yeah. Like, yeah. Li like, <laughs> like with red or whatever. Like you could get a like a one four two or whatever, but like you're probably not ever going to. Because <laughs> like the, the RNG that it would require to get a three twenty nine in this game is absolutely insane. Like most runs getting a 329 is unrealistic by the time you've beaten Whitney already. I would say, at least. I don't know if Tucker will agree with that, but... Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> even now, like, the, the record, you need a good Whitney time, I think. Yeah. The, like... The, the, the record hasn't really fallen that much in terms of like you know just like raw time but like the the 30 seconds or whatever that is fallen is like so huge with this game because of how much of the middle of it is so consistent because you're using raikou 
Yeah, Still and then, like, there's just other fights that, like, they they just suck. Like, Jasmine and then, like, Komodo Girls. I know, J Jasmine's the worst one, because it's just, like, up to 30 seconds of variance that you can do absolutely nothing about. Yeah. <laughs> Which, Workster does get a good Jasmine fight in this. He gets a... I think it's a critical. So, yeah. Um, I think that's about it for Worcester's run. And that's not it for HGSS in total. Because that Worcester run is no longer the current world record. Um, this is Dexy's 331.37. Beat Worcester by 7 seconds. Um, what's notable about Dexy's run is that his previous PB was done using the flamethrower route. Which is basically... Um, spending a lot of extra time um, in Voltor Flip to get the team for Flamethrower, it's about like 40 seconds. For I think, I think it's 40, 40 to 50 or something yeah. like that. And um, he teaches Flamethrower to Quilava and that helps him beat Whitney and Rival 3 and the Fairy Double faster. Um, basically gets you a more consistent fight. It helps you win. But um, yeah, despite Despite doing the flamethrower route and proving that, you know, it's quite good. You can still get, you know, 331, such a good time with it. Uh, he dropped flamethrower and went with the, what we consider better top end flame wheel route, where you just don't get flamethrower, you do the Whitney fight as normal. Um, and yeah, uh, this run is quite good. Um, it's a 59, 11 Raikou is nothing to scoff at. Um, I, I believe, like, the best Raikou time now is, like, a high 58. Um, so, yeah, it, it just seems like this is a cleanly executed run. Um, I don't know where it's, like, saves time over Worcester. I'm guessing, like, probably, like, Brock and Misty in, in the Kanto section. Um, yeah, uh, Dexy's, like, a Dex is like way more consistent, I guess. Um, like he doesn't seem to ever make mistakes, like really. Dexy also uh, plays safely. Yeah, he a safe player as well. Is it with that joke that you you made about Worcester and spinner passes? If you want to learn how to um, how to pass spinners, do what Worcester says, not what Worcester does. <laughs> Uh, because Worcester does teach people, like, the methods that everyone else uses to pass spinners consistently, but Worcester doesn't use any of them, and just YOLOs, like, half the spinners. So, like, if, if he, if the setup doesn't work, he just YOLOs. So. Yeah. Um, I think Dexy does do, like, the bike passes now. Where you, like, just react. Yeah, uh, react passes are, are, aren't that bad in this game. They're, they're, they're yeah. alright. Yeah, they just require you to have like really good, good reaction, reaction time. speed. Yeah, because if you've slow reaction time, you're gonna get you're gonna get seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. W w with this run, basically all the fancy stuff that we talked about with Worcester's run, uh, this run has like none of it. But yeah, like, it's still better. So like, <laughs> it's the it's the age old like oh like just get lucky really as opposed to having like the backlog of knowledge. Like just getting good fights at the end of the day is like it's the same, it's the exact same with cans manip. Getting lucky with cans is still always going to be faster than manipping them, because you'd normally have to pause for a little bit whenever you enter Surge's gym to like figure out roughly where you are and what the cans probably are going to be. Um, and obviously with getting lucky, you just run in one two and you're through. Like Rubendus's yeah. run. <laughs> <laughs> So what I get from this is just be Rebenta. Just get lucky. Uh, j j just be Dexy and have the consistency of a god and good cans as well. Because because Dexy doesn't manip cans in this and I think gets first try. So Yeah, he does get first try. It, it's The HGSS record has been first try cans for a while now. Between like four different people. Which is pretty insane given only like one of them ever manipped it. <laughs> yeah.
it just seems like whenever you're on th this kind of run, from my experience, it, it's just like, it kind of feels destined. It kind of feels like you're about to get first strike in. And just oh, I, I've had pace. two runs, I think. Um, be really, really, I think I actually had one that was better than this. So I'm going to check quickly. My Erica time versus. It was like. It was my record at that point, and you were ahead. I yeah, I, I had a, I've had runs that have been. Oh wait, oh, I'm comparing against the wrong thing. Hold on. Yeah, I, I, I did have a, a better run to like a certain point with this, but as died to cans, I think I got like seventh try cans like twice or something, <laughs> which is still nothing compared to Marchka, who got like fourteenth try cans, I think. <laughs> Or some some like ridiculously high. Yeah, every run is just a a lottery ticket to cans. Unless you have the minute. Working hard. Hardly working, more like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> also important work. to note. Important to note that cans minip is quite difficult. Like there's so much to keep track of in Kanto now that we do surge like that. There's there's also a lot to keep track of on Johto as well because you have to manage your step count mm -hmm. as well and know what to do depending on how many extra steps you've taken throughout the whole run. So you have to keep track of that and act accordingly. It's 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 a lot of extra effort that you have to put in on top of the time that you have to put in to actually write everything out. You have to then keep track of everything during a run and execute it correctly. It's no small feat, but it's um, it's it's infinite. Like it, it's so worth doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As you can see here, Dex is just doing a standard fight. There's no risk he could have gone for it because like you need to be at that weird HP where you can live a Pikachu quick attack. I do think that I do think that Worcester was like skipping buying X defense at some point, like just committing to no X defense in his runs, which is like I can see it. Like it kind of, kind of. You can see you into like the future. The sure. <laughs> I mean, it requires you to play for the HP on blue, which is like it's common, but like you know. If you don't get it, you're yeah. you're done for. Yeah. I mean, you only take the one, um, the one attack with the Snorlax anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'd ever skip buying X defense here. Yeah. I'd I'd want for for all like the length or the amount of time it actually takes to buy them. It's what like, actually like six seconds or something to buy another item. Maybe not even, it's maybe less. I don't know. The shopping menus aren't very quick in Heart Colts is over. But, I mean, uh, that's the for that for all at. the extra time it takes, I think it's... It would be silly to skip them, but to each their own, I guess. Um... Is there anything else? I guess. Um, I think Dexy is not playing PSR anymore. He, he said it right. His PC broke. He literally broke. Oh, oh yeah, his his hard drive like corrupted on his laptop, so like he 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 can't stream. Yeah. Also, he said he was like busy until May. Oh, we don't like score. Yeah, he is also very bored of heart goals so. <laughs> um. But the other thing is, shout out to Cram, who sent Dexy an English copy of Heart Gold. That's the other thing. Dexy uses Heart Gold, <laughs> not Soul Silver. Yeah, Heart Gold is like two seconds slower. Yeah, it's just, it's just funny. It's funny to see Heart Gold in 2023 being used for glitches because everyone's been using Soul Silver for years. Yeah, you also have to make like a radio minute to play on hard gold like the version matters for 
radio minute. It just won't work the same if you try to use the soul silver sheet for hard gold. Yeah. Yeah, he did that. So, shout outs to Cram and congratulations to Dexy on world record. It's nice to finally see 331s in HGSS. Like, it's been <laughs> possible for quite a while. Yeah, that, that, that one worst to run, like, why? It must almost be like two years ago now that he lost. It was like, yeah. it was actually probably about this pace. I actually, it might have actually been better than uh, the current record, like, had it finished. He, like, Worcester's had some absolutely insane runs to Red that have died. So. Hmm. I think that's about it for HESS. Great. Thank you so much, guys, for that very detailed breakdown. It's just, yeah, it's so fascinating with the DS games, specifically with all the manip and how long you take the manip and, and whatnot, and all the crazy things that can be done. I'm so used to playing games with no manip because I play later gens mostly nowadays, but it's really neat to see uh, the games get taken apart like this. Yeah, the, the DS runs are unlike... Uh, qu quite literally unlike any of the others. Like, I, I know there, there's elements of a lot of them in the other games. Um, with, like, in, in Gen 3, you love, like, extending through Rival 1 or whatever, but none of it is yeah. quite, I think, as complex as what the DS games do. Yeah, I quite honestly love how DS minutes work. It just makes for the most interesting categories to me. Yeah, they, they absolutely are. Like, it, it, to me, it's not even close that these are the most interesting games, but I know that that's a a hot topic of what games are the most <laughs> interesting, but I, I do, I truly believe that the DS games are the most interesting by a, a considerable margin. For sure, for sure. All right, well, thanks again, Skoa, for joining us today. Appreciate it. You're f feel free to stick around. We're going to take a quick break uh, for the uh, sort of intermission here. Uh, we've actually got a very special treat for you guys today. Uh, we have a, a highlights video put together by our very own Jordan97. Uh, so uh, hopefully you enjoy it, uh, featuring some good and bad from clips from <laughs> around the community. So uh, as always, if you have any feedback on that, if you want to help us gather up clips, we would appreciate that. So uh, we'll, we'll go to break and we'll see you guys on the other end. All right, welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a nice intermission. Hope you enjoyed the the clips highlights. Um, I think we're gonna send out like a little invitation to the PSR TV Discord where you can submit clips soon. So yeah, for that we just gathered clips from around PSR. Um, that's the thing that we've been working on for season three. Hope you enjoyed that. But yeah, uh, now we're gonna talk about kind of like big, big events. What's happened in um, PSR in terms of like leaderboard stuff and all that. Um, so if the first thing that we want to discuss is um, the console emulator and Dismume split. Uh, this happened in the DSPSR games. Um, this affects both um, the main boards and uh, some of the some of the category extensions, the, the more popular ones, like um, the Meta Plus categories for each of these games. Um, the reason why we have this split is because there was a couple of runs that um, basically proved that Desmume was a faster a faster way to play. Um, any of these DS games, um, especially in Gen 5. Um, so we we discussed this, uh, we had a well, community vote, and we came to the conclusion that uh, we should be splitting the Desmu May runs from all the other runs, as well as emulator and console. So this is why we have this split. Um, it makes it so that these runs are still allowed, and they're more comparable against each other than, you know, across the different modes to play. But yeah, um, the other alternative was like we could ban Desmume runs from being submitted in the future and keep 
older Desmovie runs and keep them as emulator runs because um, it hasn't gotten to the point where you know, Desmovie is completely dominant. But something had to be done, especially in like Gen 5 and category extensions too, where like one run would be a lot better than the other, but like that run was played on console and the other was played on Desmume, and it would lead to a lot of, you know, unfairness. Um, it took a while for us to get to this point, honestly. Uh, Desmume, we kind of knew already that it had like faster loads and saves and whatnot. Specifically in Gen 5, I think it's like in battle, like the lag in battle is just like non existent. And that's why you get like the advantage of like five to ten minutes, honestly. But yeah, um, is there anything else to say? Uh, let's go. Uh, no, nothing comes to mind. It's just, it, it's a nice change to see. It's, like, as you said, very, very long overdue, I think. But yeah. It's nice that it's, it's finally happened. Um, yeah, I guess I can take the next two since they're 3DS and Switch. Um, so, next big thing um, regarding Leeboards is um, mid-run breaks are now allowed for the two Gen 7 3DS games. Uh, so, Sun and Moon and then Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Um, you can take breaks. Um, I don't remember offhand what the actual ruling is. Uh, I believe it's some sort of, like, maybe two breaks with a pool of time. Um, I know that's what we've done in the Switch. Um community but whatever it is um I can actually pull it up in the discord one second yeah i don't know yeah, if it's actually find it. been updated on slc yet also okay. just to point out slc is a weird website if you click <laughs> on the rules and then click off the rules if you press back it just brings the rules back up again because apparently that's a different <laughs> thing <Hold on>. <laughs> <laughs> um <Good to> <laughs> Yeah, so the, the actual details of the like how long the breaks and everything um, might still be up in the air. I, as far as I can tell, I don't see it in the original announcement. Um, but either way, uh, that, that is something that's moving along. Um, a vote was also taken place for the Gen 6 games, um, and that did not pass there. So uh, it is currently allowed in Gen 7 only. Um, yeah, and a very long Yes, I think it makes are. more sense. Like the Gen Seven runs are just that much more longer. Gen Six is like not as long. It's like in a three-hour, four-hour range for Gen Six and five to seven for Gen Seven. So yeah, they there are. I think there are a lot of that sixty-minute break. Based on yeah, the message that I'm reading here. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and the the Gen Seven games especially are like there's a lot of downtime in them. Like there's a lot of cutscenes and stuff, but they're not. There are cutscenes you still have to interact with the game for. It's not something you can like get up and go use the restroom or something. So, um, oh, and also it... like you have to be on like the home menu when you're taking your break. So like, yeah, you can't and really I... like interact with the game at all. And I believe, yeah, taking a break during battle is is not allowed. So you you can't like get into the middle of a battle have you know a complicated situation you've not come across and take a break so you can figure out what to do in that situation um so you just have to sort of be in the overworld um and go to the home screen um and i believe the the whole break also does need to be recorded as well um so if you're in, if you're taking a break it has to be recorded sort of one vod still um and when you this will all be in the rules but when you do take a break um throw it in your src run description as like i took a break it was at this time so that way the mods can easily find it um because <laughs> because these games are so long trying to find a, a break could actually be a little tough so um yeah just answer the question uh, yeah it's uh you you like it's a uh, breaks allowing like the timer to be paused Correct. Technically, yeah. we could always take a break if we just let the timer carry on, but then you t you're losing time. The time is if the timer is running. This is like yeah. a dedicated stop the timer, do whatever I guess for the up to sixty minutes. Yep. And then you get back on with the room. Yeah, just to clarify that. 
perfect All time right. for them to have an ad break. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um. All right, and then um, the other thing uh, that was that happened um, is more related to the switchboards. Um, so a number of the category extensions for Sword and Shield have been moved to the main boards. Um, so these are pretty much all the categories related to the DLC. Um, sort of like the any not the any percent with the DLC category, but like the DLC's version of Beat the Game. Um, so those categories are the Tower of Two Fists, uh, both the Get Urshifu and Don't Get Urshifu variants, um, the Get to Calyrex run, uh, Galarian Star Tournament, which is sort of like the full beat everything in the game category, a uh, very long category, uh, and the Catch Em All category. Um, so all of those have been moved over to the main boards. Um, if you are a runner of any of those categories, you probably got an email because SRC changed Yep. some of the notifications in the system and everyone gets an email now when your runs are verified so apologies for that uh, but that all got moved over um, if you see any mistakes definitely uh, make sure to bring it up to one of the leaderboard mods and yeah that's a that's a really cool change that's something that's we we've, we've been sort of talking about doing for a while um, and finally got around to doing it and then also yeah you can also turn that off in your settings I don't like because yeah they must have re-enabled it because I swear that I turned it off a while ago. The fact that like you get the notification emails over time. <laughs> yeah, it was a thing that I think pretty much everybody like turned off immediately as soon as they found out it was a thing. Yeah. I have no idea why they globally re-enabled it for everybody. Yeah. But that website has made nothing but questionable decisions for the past three years. So. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I think that, unless I missed anything, unless we missed anything, I think that's it for just sort of the overall housekeeping things, uh, and we can move on to the notable runs. Yep, that, that's everything. That's good. So, yeah, so first up here we have, oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, first up over here we have uh, Groger again. Uh, he was on the, his, he was featured on the podcast last week uh, with uh, a couple any percent notable runs. This time he actually took the record in yellow any percent NSC. Uh, as you can see here, he had second place last time, so he improved his time by about 25 seconds. Um, since last month, um, the most notable thing we have here is that there's uh, looks like there's a new Pidgeotto manip manipulation here. Which um, seems that it starts prior to entering the forest whereas before i guess it was the save and quit was in the forest but yeah uh so just a chipping up well i might i might be slightly wrong with this um but for the and if i'm gonna go back it's like i think it started approximately around here where i've just paused it i think it was something like that i might be a bit wrong yeah the but old it was, one was, it was a lot closer yeah. oh wow okay yeah so uh, grow here doing more work on minute stuff. So that's just re reducing the encounter chance. The uh... yeah, yeah, or I guess making much. it more consistent in terms of encounters. Yeah, yeah, and the the yellow forest is much less forgiving than like the red blue forest. Like red blue, you, I mean, if you can manip through forest, you would want to, but like it's not that big of a deal because there are so many tiles that don't give any encounters. Um, but in yellow. It's basically the same as Route 1, uh, and there's so much more grass to go through, so definitely a good change. Yep. Congratulations to Groger again for that. Next up, we have a Fire Leaf Green run. This is the Math Genius with a Elite Four Round 2 second place run, which was second place by less than a second, and to be precise, it was a missed record tying record by six frames <laughs> so that's uh a little unfortunate a lot this is obviously a run where a lot there's a lot of variability so um and it looks like there was a lot of time various time losses throughout the run where um could have saved a lot more time but uh, math genius has been working on this as well as any percent for quite some time now so it's good to see uh, him get a really solid time here we we i think we we talked about the previous the current record which is i believe poke guy that that run was considered to be very very good uh, one of the better runs better records in psr 
Um, so to see a time that gets this close is, uh, is really awesome to see. And definitely we can we'll expect to see this get beaten eventually. Uh, missed, uh, lost a few, few minutes, a uh, minute and a half to Misty and Boat Rival. Weezing Explosion, I'm not sure where that was. Where do you fight Weezing? There's a Weezing on Koga. I think it's, um... There's another, it's probably a later post game. Weezing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sevy Island stuff. I'm trying to remember, I've, I've ran this, like, a couple times in, like, a race, so it's... Anything in the, in the Sevy Islands, I have a hard time remembering. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, you do manip the Squirtle, but you can't really, you can't manip Mewtwo, at least at this point. You technically, I guess, could, but it would be a pain in the ass to do. Um, just because of the way Fire Leaf Green's RNG works. But, you got a minus speed Mewtwo as well. Um, where, which led to Lance's Aerodactyl and speeding, which uh, loses a bit of time, and then obviously, uh, and also missed a range at Arcanine on the final fight as well, so... Does anyone know what the uh, what that range was? It was 10 and 16 for him. Okay. So not the best range, but you definitely will expect to hit that more than miss it. So it's a little unfortunate. Yeah. Like all these little things that could have uh, swung his run into being record. Unfortunate. But yeah. um, I think Ash Genius is pretty satisfied with this run. And yeah, I think he's already moved on to Emerald. Yeah, congrats on yeah, that run. For sure. All right, one more uh, run from the Gen 1 to 3. This is a uh, Pokemon Sapphire run by Ekman. Uh, this is any percent glitchless on emulator, and it's a second place run. And uh, Ekman got a two hour splat uh, time. Which is uh, which is really really solid. Um, what's the record on emulator? It's, I think I think does Ananen have this one? I yeah, I think it's. Well, I don't want to say anything wrong. So one fifty nine twenty. Okay, you. so pretty within a minute of uh, of record. So very solid run. A um, little bit of time loss on Roxanne and Watson. Roxanne is always kind of a. A mess because of the uh, the nose pass, but generally uh, pretty solid run, I guess, throughout, uh, and uh, got a big, big improvement to PB. So, congrats to Ekman. Oh, it looks like did he use Master Ball? Uh, yes. And an yeah. Chat. He did not eat, uh, go Yellow Ball. On Kyogre. Yeah, so definitely some time saved there as well. It wants to load. You gonna load? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, getting the master ball loses. Yeah, getting the master ball loses time there just to go. get the ball, but you don't have to worry about doing the the time, the extra bit of timings on the minute. You just minute for stats. So. Uh, and then he gets the mild, which I guess is that that's one of the better ones, I'm guessing. Yeah, it is the best one. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Very nice. But yeah, I think that's about it for that one. Um Brad Stackman on the on the PB. And uh, I guess we'll move on to we've already talked about DS. Um uh, we don't have anything from the 3DS, unfortunately. Uh, this yeah. month, but we do have one, one from the Switch side of things. We actually, with the cat, with the with some of the uh, power of two fists moved over. There's, I think there was another run that should have been noted, but we'll talk about that one later when we go through the roundup. But I'll let I'll let uh, etiquette take this one. Um. Yeah. So uh, when this loads, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this I, I'm is... gonna explain why. I think I've got. I... For anyone who uses Chrome, they introduce a thing where they like they'll deload. Yes. Like, the, and I guess I still have that enabled. Basically, the answer is I'm a fool. 
That's okay. And it's causing this. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is Echi getting a 258.46 in Let's Go EV any percent, no mount skips. Um, this is a time that you expect in, in like an any percent run or something, but this was no mount skips. Uh, this now has EV actually um, the faster version in all three categories uh, for Let's Go. Um, and this right here is basically the reason why. So uh, Etchy caught this super size Chansey on Route uh, 6. Um, generally, at this point in the game, you're like level 18, level 19, um, and you can see the EV just bumped all the way up to level 27. Um, essentially, from this point until uh, Rocket Hideout, if you watch this run, uh, you it won't look like a, a typical um, Let's Go Eevee run. Like the, the strats you have to do are just completely different. Like you don't have to worry about a lot of X items. You don't have to worry about a lot of things. Uh, this is just phenomenal luck. Um, and it was able to carry it through. Uh, th this run, if I remember right, had one of the worst catch counts I think I've ever seen um coming out of like the pokemon tower section um but that didn't really matter like it just had such a boost from this particular section and honestly like there are a number of waste levels here as well um generally you like the levels on the eevee are obviously really worthwhile um but bell sprout evolves at level 21 so everything above level 21 is a wasted level uh jigglypuff doesn't evolve via level up so all those levels are wasted um but it really didn't matter. So, um, but yeah, if you want to skip ahead to like, um, maybe like an hour 40, um, so typically at Pokemon Tower, um, you're looking at anywhere between like 30, three to 37 Pokemon caught um, actually go a little bit before this, uh, basically before this route. Um, you're looking at like 33 to 34 Pokemon or 33 to 38 Pokemon uh, leaving Pokemon Tower. And um, I think we're going to find he had something like 29. I want to say. Um, which is just like, if you have the, that kind of a catch count going into the end game, it's like this, this is horrible, but he was just so far ahead because of it. Uh, yeah, 28 Pokemon caught here, um, which 28 leaving rock tunnel is bad, let alone after the evolutions and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, just a, just a phenomenal run. Uh, lots of late game catches you can see here. Um, Pidgey line, Rattata line. Um, still had a couple evolutions. It was, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that is the first sub three in EV NMS. Um, and like I said, it is now ahead of Pikachu. Pikachu has a 259. Um, and so this is the next minute barrier past that. Yeah, I think like this is. I think I actually said he's done with this character now. Oh yeah. He's like, oh. <laughs> Wait. <too good. laughs> um, this is. He's got, he's got the tweet, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, time-wise, this is a. Like, a, just a phenomenal time. Uh, this is one that you don't. You would not expect to see this, <laughs> at all. Um, and it's. I mean, obviously, like, Echi's a phenomenal runner as well, but definitely carried by that Chansey catch. Um, the odds of even getting a Chansey is like a half a percent per spawn on any given route. Um, the odds of it being glowing, I want to say, is like 10%, and the odds of it being a supersized is like another 10% on top of that. So just, it's one of those things you do it enough times, you're going to get one. Um, but having a supersized glowing Chansey spawn at really the last time you would catch it, like you wouldn't really think to catch or you wouldn't really want to catch 
a Chansey on like Route 10, for example, just one route later, just because your party's going to look so much different. You're going to have so many more Pokemon that are going to gain so many more unnecessary levels. Um, but it was just like right at the sweet spot to make it worth it. Is that everything with uh, this run? That's everything I've got. All right. Then moving on to Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorer Sky B Dark Ride No Wonder Mail English Emulator World Record by Cabral. Uh, this is done in 8 hours, 48 minutes, 25 seconds. It was apparently very average, though this section in, which is Aegis Cave, was apparently good. Uh, use a Trico Meowth combination. Um, to start with, and then like the only percent time was a 5.30.29, which was also a PB. Then I think that ends up being fourth on that leaderboard. So, congrats to Cabral. But, yep, once again, another PMD uh, world record. Uh, and another PMD beat Dark Ride world record. There's been one for the past, like one every month for the past few months at least, I feel like. So, just see that that character is being busy, but one game that doesn't typically get around as much, you don't see as often. Um, this is me mage uh, when it loads. This is me mage with Rumble Blast any percent console no passwords world record. This is a three hour 38 minutes 41 second. Uh, and it's now apparently two hours, well, it's not apparently, it is two hours and 20 minutes ahead of second place. Um, However, the previous world record was around the 341, uh, which is also held by Me Mage. Um, yeah, there's not, not really too familiar with Rumble Bast or Rumble Bast strats. Um, and apparently, no one will get to see it, seeing as it's like this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Iron. Why is this one loaded? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunate. But yeah, this is a... Um, I think we've talked about this in the podcast like a while ago. But this is a uh, ROM hack of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver called Sacred Gold Storm Silver. Uh, it's got, I think, quite a bit of um, a bit of a difficulty increase, I would say, compared to the, uh, the vanilla game. And the previous record used... Did not use the Glaceon, and so it's really neat to see a, an evolution like that being used as the main. Uh, previous rec run used Charizard, uh, so I think you start with you do have you have the regular starters. You pick up a free Eevee, um, I think from Mr. Pokemon or something. Yeah, like, like Cynthia Epic gives it to you. I remember this from. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think she, it's like Mr. Mr. Pokemon. Yeah. yeah, feel free to just jump in tucker when it because i've never played this i've just never oh I, I don't really know yeah. much about the run either i know like the previous yeah. route was um charmander you get like a level 10 the canto starter from violet city yep. center um so yeah both both of them you get pretty early on I, I do think this run uses like charmander up until a certain point and then you switch off to play stand i don't know i i like Actually, I don't think I don't think it out. even uses Charmander at all. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, just it gets the EV and then uh, and then you get access to evolving it. I'm not sure what the mechanism is because in, 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 typically you need like uh, the icy rock or whatever it is. Yeah, me neither. I don't know. It seems uh, like you evolve it after some... Elderly. You evolve it pretty early. I know that. Yeah. I think the EV has adaptability as well, so that makes its stab much better. So I think it's. Yeah. Not sure if that uh, how many how many fights you use the EV on, but um, there's some there's a few ROM hacks that you get you can use EV Lucians, then you get um, in terms of getting some of them which would evolve say by happiness or whatever you could if there's a slightly different mechanic, which is always always fun when that happens. So uh, this has kind of revived a bit of discussion in in the Discord about trying some of the other EV Lucians like Flareon. So uh, I think Head Bob mentioned he was going to look into that. But uh, nice yeah, okay, see. there we go. Head Bob in the chat is explained. 
whether they added a, a, like a custom ice stone or something in here, I'm not sure exactly whether that would actually do it, but yeah, it's a bit of a surprise to see this uh, <laughs> kind of out of nowhere here. Um, it's not a run a game that's ran that often, but it was really interesting to see uh, something different here. Yeah, I think like, off the top of my head, the only person I've seen run this sort of yeah, I think they did run this was a uh, was JT, I think a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen like JT, JT and Kitora. Kitora, Kitora, yeah. They're the main two that kind of run the uh, the DS, and I guess Head Bob has done a bit of. I'm not sure if he's done any uh, any of the DS games, maybe, but small number of people who who who, uh, who play the DS ROM hacks, which is which is pretty cool. Oh, this has no manipulation as well. Um, it's just be, it would just be a lot of work <laughs> to figure that out. Um, so you do have to reset for good stats and whatnot on the EV. It's the uh, that's one thing. But yeah, I think that's it for uh, for that. Oh, it is impossible for R four. That is true. So that's everything yep that is everything okay yeah just uh the one last thing had bob mentioned obviously an emulated run oh here we go Look. <laughs> are we gonna go back to me mages run now oh no we're gonna go to the uh the marathon runs i was yeah. actually really interested to see that uh rumble blast we will hopefully we'll get that teed up and and uh, we can show that later on uh yeah, so can, a few marathons coming up now. Yeah, see, see if you can get that going while, uh... Oh, wait. Okay, there, there we go. go. Yeah, I just have to bring it up on a different tab. It's one of those... I just need to turn that setting off. I didn't think it would cause it, but yeah. Um, I've never played Rumble, so... I, this is all new to me. But it's interesting. It seems interesting. You use Luta Cola in it? This is this is already a top tier run already. Yeah, right, so this is a game played... that. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna kind of exp... like kind of go over like what this game is. It's a sequel to Rumble that came out a couple years later. Mm -hmm. So that's. I had no idea about this game. I knew about Rumble, but. I think the only thing I'm aware of, I think this is the game. That is named differently in the like PAL regions. I might be wrong with that though. That might, might, that might be the other sequel. Yes, you are correct. I have the Wikipedia open here. It was in PAL region. It was called Super Pokemon Rumble, and in Japan, it was called Super Pokemon Scramble. Ah. A little bit of trivia there. Mhm. Mm yeah, this just seems to be. Try and avoid any, everything as you can until you get to the boss section. You can apparently just walk through things. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, again, there's not really <laughs> much I can talk about. There wasn't much left in like uh, comments about this either, so... And like I only noticed about this run earlier today, that I didn't really have the time to ask either, fortunately. But maybe if there is a Rumble boss run in the future, I'll try and make sure we'll have a bit more at least to say about these yeah, runs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, on to the marathon sections is uh Toka, yeah, so Iron, the... Etiquette. Do you want who wants to? I can um, I can say I, I... I can talk about the thing coming up after the marathon runs here, so one yeah, of you guys can take. Yeah. Um, I'll take this one then. This is uh, Aloe vs. Galeno vs. Bill Bonsai vs. Warx. So a four-way ECSS glitchless manipulus race is happening at Speedons 3, which is in Paris. Um, it's happening March 10th, 10.49 uh, a.m. That'll be exciting.
it's this one. It's okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is GSPS. I can't even say that. That's that's a Polish word. Yeah, GSPS. <laughs> uh, we have Ed Word running Red uh, Red Classic on March 10th, same day, uh, 1330. Um, and then another German marathon, which is... Is that even a word? Uh, it's, an, <laughs> I, it's, it's an acronym. Acronym, okay. DVD-S-E-D-W. <laughs> um, which is a German marathon. Basically, German really, really long a -thon. Um, we have Crystal Mond running Crystal Key Item Rando, March 20th, uh, 1420. And we have an Italian Marathon, GUF Primavera Pichot. SBD Wolf is going to run Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explores the Sky, any percent Wonder Mill. Uh, Cutscene list on March 26, 1819. At 18, so if 19. anyone wants to know what that massive acronym is, I can try to... I can try to say it. Know, I yeah. took a bit of German a long I'm time I'm pretty ago. curious, yeah. <laughs> das Vermutlich langste deutschsprachige speedrun event der Welt. So, um, if there's anyone German in the chat, I apologize, I apologize for my <laughs> extremely butchered German. I also don't even know what that means, so... <laughs> I just... I just read it. But anyway... Um, Quite a bit of uh, we have we have with Trevaria in the chat. She's she's she speaks German. Hopefully that was good. Hope I didn't completely butcher that. Um, yeah, so like quite a lot of quite a lot of uh, international marathons here. So we're gonna have a there's probably gonna, there's quite a few more coming up in uh, in the uh, more marathons coming up in the next few months for sure. Oh, I'm seeing some rave reviews in the chat. <laughs> Thanks, folks. <laughs> All right, moving on to our next, uh, our next kind of thing we're uh, we're going to cover on the podcast today. This is the Fire Leaf Green tournament. Um, so we have uh, there was a trailer that was put together by I believe Primal Pizza, which went live. Um, I'm not sure if it was live on, on the channel, but it was on YouTube at the very least, so be sure to check that out. And uh, sign-ups will be on until, I believe, the 30th of March. And the uh, the tournament will start on the 31st, or thereabouts, yeah. so... Sign-ups so until the 26th of March. March. Oh, 26th, okay. My apologies. So, uh... Yeah, if you're uh, if you're interested in that, be sure to join the Fire Red Leaf Green Racing Discord. There's lots of great people there. There's weekly races or more than weekly races that are organized there. Um, if you want to get some practice in, I highly recommend it. I've done I've taken part in this tournament a couple times. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a good group of people. So uh, be sure to if you're if you've never played the game before, I definitely recommend uh, giving it a try and. Uh, and taking part it'll be a lot of fun no matter what what your skill level is so uh be sure to uh join the discord and sign up for the uh for the tournament uh, thank you etiquette for posting the links so you'll be able to see uh get some more information on that there's uh there'll also be uh if you don't have the time necessarily to take part in like a, the full tournament because say you're busy at like the end of april you could also potentially sign up for commentary if you're familiar with the game or if you ever, if you want to help out with tech, um, message me. <laughs> because, yeah, so uh, another important thing, yeah, another important oh, yeah. thing is that the tournament will be hosted on PSR TV this year, which is uh, different from before, which was we were with Ski Speed Gaming before. So yeah, I really like that change. Hopefully, in other tournaments too, we can run them on PSR TV from now on. Yeah, so we'll be doing yeah, we'll be doing all the uh, all the draws and round for each round as well as all the races on this channel. We have also got a, a second channel that we're gonna have in case we have a second race at the same time as another one. So, which was very often the case in previous versions of the tournament. Um. 
Yeah. Do 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 we want to do the leaderboard round? Or is technically I'm down. not actually meant to be doing it? <laughs> oh, we're done. <laughs> no, we but it's there. Quick. It's run. It's being run. Like, I'll, I'll always run it. I'll always run it. But we don't have, like... We can go through it. We can go through it quickly. We're uh, yeah. not even quite at the two-hour mark, so... For the, yeah. for the podcast, I think it's fine. Fair enough. In that case... As always, just feel free to shout out anything that you notice. Like, for example, Maddox in 6th place for anything glitchless in red, a 145.50. I don't know what 3 with yeah, Magic that's a, Candy means. That's a really solid time. Yeah. yeah. It just felt that's right. only, wow. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's... Uh... Oh my god, Wartab just found a shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> we gotta check the red boards. I want to know. Uh, this is okay. It's the second slowest 145, but yeah, it, it feels right that Matt has a 145, given how he's a really great player at red. Um, three repel mansion candy. Fascinating. It must mean something, but what? The route that he did. <laughs> oh, is that a specific Congrats. route? Yeah. Yeah, like his specific route. Ah, okay. Uh, 14th for Square SR. Uh, a 146.3. How's it cut? How's your run? Um. It was all right. It's the first PB I have in this category since January of 2018. Um, it was a long-standing PB, but th this was this was like the first solid run I finished. Um, just updated strats are just better. Uh, old run didn't do Mega Punch, didn't do Full Moon Manip. Like it was that old. So um, I do plan on getting, or plan on going for, I should say, a 149, but. I've been sidetracked with Scarlet Violet stuff. Going fast by going walking speed on uh That might be something to talk about next month. Yeah, I think so. Martin scores easy. That's a funny username. Yeah. Uh new snap world record holder, I think. World record holder. But yeah, they branch off into other games as well. So 90th for them in red. Same St. Glitch with a 153.18. Finally, in 6th with a 159.28. In Ames St. Glitch's classic. Thank you, Speed Kratz. Gaming. Kratz on sub 2. Ergy as well with a sub 2. Yeah, the 159.46. Okay, was that from last month, or is that was it red last month for Grokia? <laughs> it was time. all red last month. Oh, all right, so that's what we missed. He had up. a yellow second last month, yeah. Uh, that's probably. Uh, so apparently we, we did miss one, but uh, Grokia with the world record in any percent. It, it's any percent. Is it just this? Is it the same as in red? Not the same thing. Wait a minute. Um, this is what I think it is. Is it like the run that Matt said I had like a frame of time save? <sighs> then that was the red one. Uh, okay. I mean, it might be like, this one as well, but <laughs> it looks like more than a frame. So, wait, one eighteen seventy six. Oh no, mm. I honestly don't know. <laughs> like. I think Fair he enough. did not have record before this. Yeah. Okay. Congrats oh, to Goku. Uh, any percent glitchless on the 3GS Virtual Console World Record, Rigor Man with a 51207. Which, what's the world record for? Gold, gold is 323. 
I think this is an empty board, but yeah, it's still. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was expecting it's empty bars, but. Uh, still, it's a world record. What makes. What makes the 3 year special console so much? I mean, I don't know if it's this uh, much slower, but. It's, it's like the frame rate. Frame rate. It actually runs faster. Than... Oh, it's faster. Right. I believe it's faster. I want to say it runs at 60 frames per second instead of like 59 point whatever, whatever. It's like 59 point something compared to 59 point something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, fifth place for Blue Magma in Sapphire Aimsing Glitchless on console. A1 58-23. We also have Bouncy's Ruby Run, she submitted to the oh, well, yeah. Ruby Sapphire boards. That's Ruby World Record right there. I was going to ask you. 1802. Oh, Ruby doesn't get played as much. Yeah, ground on is just not much worse. But he is playing Ruby so he learns Sapphire. I think it makes sense. Similar route. Yeah, fair. Also, again, though, with Fire Elite Green 15 for A20339. Something apparently happened on Laura Live. And I might not always have problems. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have a feeling this any percent for Fire Elite Green section is going to double in size next month. Yeah. <laughs> with everybody so getting well. ready for the tournament. Yeah. Don't know, plenty of runs there. Kid Rocco in 24 with a 205.52 as well. A few emulator yeah, it's runs. Been a while, it's been a while since he beat, so that's good to see. He's been getting some good paces recently. Always good. Vincento in 6th. For Emerald in St. Glitch was a 231.45. Making improvements. Goa. Goa. TP glitchless. That's not my current PB anymore. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, you have a 344. 344. 09. No. What does that so, mean? Uh, uh, fourth on the board, technically fifth, because Saiyan's run isn't there. Um, but, yeah, a, a good improvement, but still not great. <laughs> Is that really your first Diamond Pro glitchless run? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done so much any percent, I just assumed you had done glitchless. Mm, well, I had attempted it in the past and never okay. ever finished a run. But now I have only finished two runs. What made you want to do it? Um, I... <laughs> whenever I was running Heart Gold to Silver, um, I made a deal with albo that if he got sub four in pearl manipulus before i pb'd in heart gold so silver i would run dp glitchless and if i pb'd before he got sub four he would run heart gold so silver again and i got annoyed at heart gold so silver and stopped playing and then like the next day he won the the agreement so <laughs> fair enough that that that's why I'm running it. Or you keep running it. Um, yeah, I I think I'll keep going after that 344. I w I was pretty drained of motivation whenever I did that run. In all honesty, like I I think for like the first like R of the run, like until the lucky egg, I just I was on like another planet. I just didn't really care. Um, I think I only like really, really started to pay attention to the run after Volkner because I, or no, it was around Volkner because it was 342 pace out of Spear Pillar. I was like, okay, I like, I'll, I'll like seriously pay attention. And then ironically, like immediately after Volkner, I made a mistake that lost me like 45 seconds. So I should go back to not paying attention is what I've gathered from that run. 
Because apparently I play better whenever I'm not paying attention. <laughs> yep. If you don't pay attention, then you hit all your fire blasts. That's true, yeah. I I hit every fire blast in that run. Didn't miss a single one. It's crazy because but... you do like 23 of them, right? Like... You, you use quite a lot of them, yeah. And a, and a good number of them are absolutely horrendous to miss. Like, some of them are just instant death if you miss. So... But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and I also don't think DP is as fun as Platinum, so I think that's partially why I'm not as motivated to play it. But after getting the 344 and having it, you know, be 342 pace uh, out of Spear Pillar, um, I think um, I'm, I'm a bit more energized to play it. I think I'm going to try and push for at least second place, maybe, maybe record. You're not alone in the opinion mm -hmm. that DP is not better than Platinum. No, I I, I think DP is the, the best record in DS. Oh, no, no, I mean just as a game. As a speed oh, game. right, in, in general, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I do think that that's why I'm, I'm not majorly pushing for the record in DP, because I, I think it's by far the uh the best ds record by it, it like it, it is really 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 good up here joe with a couple of yeah which was jpn center run yeah up here joe focusing on the ds runs but i know they did, they did a lot of uh Switch stuff. They didn't do the way through the yes for a bit as well. They're just doing everything now, I guess. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, world record and emulator for Gibraltar. A 250 33. Fifth place in Black 2, White 2 for ETS for Life. 80% English, yes, last 3DS. A3, 1228. Then only 39 seconds behind. In 8th, Rubentas with a 31307. Up, oh, second place in emulator in Sun Moon, 80%. Uh, Daniel O. Like, uh, Daniel 0114. A 502.36. Big place for Randall in uh, 80% no mouse tech on Pikachu. The comment is perfect. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, if you. So you want to evolve Butterfree, which at, is at level 10, but you need to deposit it before it hits level 13 because it learns all three of the powder moves at level 13. Otherwise, you have to decline each individual one. So my guess is, got a bucket of experience, wasn't expecting, and uh, had to deal with that. that Unironically, like a 20 second time loss or more. <laughs> Randall, Randall's running on capture card now. Just to Randall. Uh, Amos said no mouse gets Eevee second place for Cyan. Uh, 30145. Really good time. But also the fact that, like, Edgy's run is almost three minutes fast it just shows how ridiculous Edgy's run was. Mm -hmm. uh, 14th for Trivaria. A 30508. 28th for Kyoran. A 313.26. And then I did just to round off that Spider Z in 48th for 318.52. Uh, Razor's Edge in 5th for all the channel of Pokemon EV. A 534.50. Couple of sword runs, a 
to see it. Uh, wait, oh, they're both teleport now. It's all good to see them, but. <laughs> <laughs> Minor disappointment, I guess. <laughs> oh, come on. The rare BDSP run. Yeah, the rare BDSP run. 14, 80% glitchless, brilliant diamond English, no turbo, music off. Sounds like a yeah. PMD category. Yeah, it does sound like a PMD. BDSP, I'm pretty sure, is worse now. Yeah, I think it is. There's too many variables. I mean, yeah, they, I they like make sense, but it's there's a lot of variables now. There is a lot of variables. There's probably one or two you could combine in there. Like, uh, there's not too much difference between Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, yeah. right? Yeah. No, there isn't. I'm of the belief that they should have never been split. I go back and forth, personally, but I could see the things being put back together at some point. Well, to that, one of the main reasons why they were split was because originally it was thought of uh, Scyther would be the quickest route, which Scyther is a diamond exclusive, and that was part of the reason. Then ended up, was it a good alt route? It's a good alt route, yeah. Yeah, good alt route. As you've heard, this was a Scyther run, apparently. I'm going to guess with that comment. Yeah. Uh, Linz Arceus, catch them all, third place for Blood Dirk, an 8.51.05. They have been really pushing that for, for the catch them all. I remember, I, I remember in my head at least seeing Blood Dirk every now and then. But congrats to them. Uh, Scarlet, Violet, still plenty of runners. I'm looking for uh, a 5.26.33. Name sent, uh, I want to say that was yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, that is yesterday. Um, Five sixteen in game time. There was that shows the the patch did not do much. A couple of uh, oh at least one. I don't know yeah, a couple of uh, Japanese uh, world records. I was actually gonna say I think. Um, Caro's got to run up there at second place for any percent glitchless. I want to say I saw on Twitter that they beat Ringo's time, so they actually do have a new record, but I don't know where that is anymore. I can't find it. So I might be just spreading misinformation, but there might be some movement at the top of the leaderboard next month. I'll say that. I think it. Other legends. Well, actually, just a, a, like a quick thing, because you have done a fair few uh, other veterans. Got PVs. Yeah, I um, I basically just went ahead and learned the other categories because I had mainly focused on any percent and then a little bit of victory road. Um, but I got the the 52 in Path of Legends. Um, hardest part of that category is getting a runnable cat. <laughs> uh, well. Getting a runnable cat is like the first hard part, and then actually getting like past things like Tatsugiri um, on good pace. Yeah. But that was a pretty, pretty solid run. I got that quicker than I think I should have. Um, just knowing how much some people have struggled with things like the Arvin fight, I've had essentially perfect Arvin luck um, on the runs I've done. So I think I got lucky there. Um, Starfall is from recent. Which we'll be probably talking about Starfall next month, uh, just because there've been some new developments literally overnight. Um, and then it's not going to show up here because I, I did the run yesterday, but I also got second place in Victory Road, um, which was pretty cool. Just sort of rounding out the the categories on the leaderboard. Boosting your score. Um, but Iron, you also got a Starfall Street PB there? Yeah, that was... Um, this was the category that we're still not sure <laughs> what the fastest Pokemon is. And so um, I was using Toxtricity still here. I, I'm looking into switching to something else um, based on these new developments partially. So I'm going... To but this is a pretty solid time for for this one. So, um, but it was a it was 
don't I don't think there's too much more I could save here. As you can see, I'm he's still a ways off of Etiquette's run, so. It's an interesting category. The routing is very compli or very complicated. And we also don't know a lot about the how the mechanics work for the the auto battles, so it's kind of a big thing that's still unknown. Like a few Japanese, a few more Japanese world records. Um, I guess the important thing to note for the Japanese runs, they start from a new game, I guess. Mm. Whereas for the English versions, they started after all the school stuff. Boring. Yeah, it's usually depending on your early game luck, it's going to be about forty-seven to forty-eight minutes of difference. Yeah, and I guess another thing with the Japanese timing is that the route that we use in English is very unlikely to be viable in Japanese just because of the way that they have to because they have to start at the beginning. So we're like resetting for cat, like for the Masquerade route for Path of Legends or resetting for stats, whereas they could do that. Um, but that's a pretty brutal reset. To get on a run with but technically yeah. it is possible i think they're still all using flamigo one th i guess one other thing is that there's you saw that you see there's a treasure hunt glitched run by halk the the glitch is actually that glitch which is the, the super glide has been patched out in the newest patch um so some people have updated their game some people haven't so i'm sure we're going to see um, a leaderboard um change happening in terms of setting up different categories potentially moving moving forward yeah it's it's potentially a little awkward because they're on the latest patch there is no glitched category anymore at least things that we know about um yeah so it's kind of like uh what do we do with the runs that are already there what do we do moving forward um because i mean if you look at the boards there's really not a whole lot of movement on the glitched side anyways um so it's just a matter of we just have to sort of discuss it we haven't gotten around to it yet um yeah i think the issue is just we weren't sure whether it was going to get patched i think a lot of people were kind of holding off on yeah on running that, the, literally the reason I, I said it multiple times on stream like the reason i wasn't doing anything glitched was i was like i don't want to spend hours routing something that'll get patched out um and like i knew it was a possibility but i didn't really expect it uh and then it happened so um they patched out the glitch and did not improve performance at all so <laughs> not surprised so so it was a net loss overall on the uh on the update Parities. doesn't look like the doesn't look like the performance got worse though so yeah that. Yeah, the only thing, I guess that's actually something that's worth mentioning. So the, the two main things that affect speedruns that happened in the patch, uh, one of them is actually good. Um, it is just a flat two second time save on any uh, category that fights the electric gym. Um, there is a Pokemon Belly Bolt who has an ability, Electromorphosis, where when it gets hit by a move, uh, it like charges its electric moves. And that ability would proc when it got KO'd as well. Which doesn't make any sense because like your next electric move is not going to happen because you're dead um and so they made it so that doesn't happen anymore so free two second time save um the downside is on the nimona fight before mezagoza and the two star battles in mezagoza they added new camera angles uh so if anyone follows like vgc there's a whole thing about how they added like actual cinematics during battles instead of you just waiting for your opponent to move and like just having a static view of the field so they've added these new cinematics um and it just so happens that some of those the game waits for it to finish before it allows the move to go through um so you could actually just be sitting there waiting for the camera to pan around uh where before it would trigger instantly so uh, not performance getting worse but it does technically take a little bit longer to get through like the Nimona fight now. 
1.2 yeah. curse is real. Yeah, you still got your DLC patch to go as well. <laughs> I know. Very quickly. Third place in, in 80% switch for Task Beginner 2450. A lot of Japanese from this. Oh, all the stuff. All, and the new stuff for that as well. Uh, okay, I guess we don't know Bright Side Adventures. But all the people that have flax. Uh, all Japanese uh, runners. That's interesting. Bouncy in fifth for Catch Jirachi at 4.58. Just gotta throw that one out there. Second place for Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, 100% uh, for Dasperro. A 184136. Uh, world record for all special episodes, uh, English DS, Australian DS, miscellaneous category, um, anonymous with a 30333. The Big Miss record. record. That's actually notable to mention with the bounty that's going on. Mm -hmm. And the Clefable Vault main closing in on the sub 150 mark. Oh, yeah. That too. I think people have committed to the Clefairy Clefairy route to get the sub 150. I even think that record in this roundup is outdated. Because I've already got that. Got the 150 50 this yesterday. Uh, fair enough. So the blindfolder world record for Shifty, a 223.23 in yellow. Oh, that one's notable because that was one that somebody actually beat. Like, Shifty has always been the blindfolded person. Um, but somebody actually beat that time last month. Yeah, it was Bill Bonsai. So, so Shifty took it back. Okay. Crackens to fight back. There's Balancey's uh, Ruby run again. I think I have a sub 210 in Ruby. Nine coal, uh, nine 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 coins. World record by Gold is uh, Gold is over. Thirty-seven fifty-six. And an end with a makey run. Or yeah. one link. Second place Hello. on Manipulus any percent on them later. By the way, a one oh four eleven. Looks like a really good gym char. <laughs> HP ice 69. Nice. High speed. Good special. Oh, actually, with the minute plus elite four round two world record at 515.21. Horrible brain. <laughs> world record. Yeah, it's a horrible brain. Uh, fourth gen gamer in tenth for black white for Nicholas. Uh, a four forty seven thirty eight. Oh, it took it. Nicholas world record. Neat. Yeah. Um. I guess I came back to this category after seeing all these Desmume runs. As you can see, they, a bunch of French runners have submitted Desmume, Nicholas white two times. Um. Let's just say I wasn't happy about it. And I want to improve my time, even though their times weren't like weren't even as good as my old PB. But yeah, I got I got a six minute PB in this. It's quite a good run, actually. Nice. Yeah, pretty happy about that. So in Manipulus for White Two, do you still do Drillbird, just not Manipulus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, I guess it looks like all the French runners went from heart gold, soul silver to like to white human Nicholas. Mm -hmm. It was heart gold, soul silver, right? That there was they're all doing. Yeah, they they were doing Asia something now. White too. Couple of flex on Mumrans. A uh, couple of that's it, uh, stadium category extensions uh, from Ukraine. And then finally, Purify Lugia world record in Pokemon SD Gale of Darkness category extension, extensions. Reds come with a 625.08. And that is all the runs in this past month. Very cool. Ray. Ray. So, the next podcast, depending on any races, I guess, for the Red Red Leaf Green Tournament, uh, should be on April 1st. I believe that is a Saturday. Yes, that is the first Saturday in April. Uh, Skoa, thank you for uh, coming on once again. You're most welcome. Thank you for giving me my season three debut. Yep, season three <laughs> debut. I imagine we will see you at least once more, potentially. Uh, I, I would like to hope so. <laughs> I, I would like to hope. I, I, I hope I do well enough to to return at some stage. Feel free to follow the podcast hosts. Yeah, there. I was trying to think of something to say afterwards, but yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I think. Um, I'm just thinking. Shall we just post a link to the server now? Yeah, I think that would be best. Our server, yeah, yeah well. already. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might have to enable permissions on the clips channel or no? I don't know. Uh, no, that one should be fine. No, uh, that, that one's probably good. That one's public. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I was just generating the link. Yeah, so You're this not is for. The... Um, yeah, this is for if you have any clips you want to share, we can show them on our intermission. Yeah. So we'll we don't have probably... to go searching through all the discords to find them. Yeah. It's... It is also like, because there used to be the podcast Discord, this also doubles up as that, but it's also a yeah, helpful for the clips as well, but also like a focus for any other PSR events that are organized by like PSR TV specifically. So, like, for example, the Fire Red Leaf Green tournament, that's in the Fire Red Leaf Green race Discord. Um, but like anything like the PSR Marathon, like PSR Marathon 22, like last year's, that was organized in this Discord. There'll hopefully be other stuff. We'll figure it out. Um, there was enough. Um, yeah, for the I'm because I'm, I'm going to mention because I put time and effort into this. Uh, the uh, the montage like the PSR highlights that will probably be out on uh, Monday, I guess. If we're gonna have the podcast out tomorrow, I guess Monday would make sense. So, look for that on the YouTube channel. This is where I have to try and remember the command. Uh, YouTube, there we go. So feel free to uh, subscribe and that will be up in a couple of months there. Yeah, anything else to mention? Mention before no. we go? No. Um, just a general reminder, sign up for the Fire Red Leaf Green tournament if you are interested. Signups yes. go because we will not be able to remind you next month because yes. the signups will be over. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, do you still have? Uh, uh, I just closed the tab. Ah, uh, oh. Um, yeah. So everyone has a good rest of their day or evening wherever they are. Stay safe and take care. Bye. 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 Goodbye. <laughs>